So in the 1980s, were we thinking about Z-House? I think certain people were. What new technology do researchers think we'll be living with? You would think of some weird futuristic kind of building. You really don't know what to expect. People want to use technology in a way that makes their lives easier. Everyone now is into smart features. It's becoming an expectation of a home from the consumer. We all live in a very fast-paced environment. I think there are other applications of smart that probably may not deliver the value that may be sort of gadgety fads. How, how does energy efficiency kind of fit together with smart technology? The Z House actually looks very similar to the house that was built 10 years ago, but it goes together differently, it performs differently. And now it's about how it all talks together and makes it simple for our customer, and that's the key to the Z House is the concept. So how do we take it from concept to reality? As our homes get smarter, we need to maintain a consumer-first perspective. Sustainable living needs to get better, easier and cheaper for everyone. Your Google Home or Amazon Alexa, or a platform you may not have even heard of yet, will one day integrate technology seamlessly into every corner of your home. The Z House has incorporated smart technology into its design. From efficient heating solutions such as the infrared panelling and heated skirting boards, to the white goods such as the fridge freezer, dishwasher and washing machine. The home of the future is always one of these um, terms that's bandied about and, and people think it's got robots and all that kind of stuff in it. Actually, where we see the home of the future is really not entirely dissimilar from what we have now, it's just how it goes together, how it performs and some of the technologies that we use. Connected Devices Alliance reports that smart home technologies can reduce energy use in the homes by almost 30%. And while government stepped in to help with energy bills ahead of winter 2022, the average household bill will still cost around £2,500 a year, double the cost of the year before. So it's never been more important to be efficient with the way we consume energy. If that also means that the end home is more convenient to live in, well, then that's just an added bonus. From back in the day of the introduction of smartphones to now smart cars, people are around smart a lot more. Our customers are now looking for homes that, you know, whether that's from a security, uh, music, um, just general life aspect, they want it to be smart. According to Statista, there'll be an estimated 75 million smart devices in households by the year 2025. Smart homes are here to stay, much in the same way as when the smartphone first hit the markets in 2007 with the iPhone. This means that for Z House to be a true home of the future, smart tech had to be integrated into every aspect of the home. A lot of people sometimes make that the smart bit is having really high tech in. No, the smart bit is that it is so simple that our customers naturally are able to manage that home and the technology does all the clever bit in the background. With juggling multiple different smart technologies, we wanted to test how the different elements work together and what it was really like for the customer to live in a smart home. First and foremost, the house needs to be a home. So we needed to better understand what it's like for our customer to live in a smart home. As a world research project, it was essential that we listen to the consumer voice by having someone live in the Z house for a short period. It was really simple to live in. I don't know if anything felt revolutionary, but I do think that's kind of half the point. It shouldn't be something that's in your face. It should just be second nature to use stuff and a lot of the stuff in Z houses. There are a number of, uh, of, of technologies that have been installed in this, in this house. Uh, the main ones are the solar panels on the roof, there are two uh, five kilowatt hour uh, batteries as well to store the uh, energy when it's not being used. The solar panels will produce uh, just a little under 5,000 kilowatt hours or units of electricity. And just to put that in context, your average house uses just over 4,000, so it should be enough to power a three or four bedroom house. The main myth I, I find that people talk about with regards to solar panels is they'll never work in the UK. And that just isn't the case. They still uh, provide a very meaningful amount of electricity and actually in, in some ways they're more efficient because the colder it is, the better solar panels work. There's an EV charger to charge vehicles. Um, plus there's a number of other technologies, for example, a home energy management system to actually control when there's, there's bits of energy being used and to make sure the energy use is optimised in the house. 
We've managed to pick products that are at the leading edge of our technology levels, like the Twin Tech Fridge Freezer, as well as an integrated dishwasher and washing machine. They're using less energy, they're using um, less water. Washing machine, it's one of the ones that uses the least amount of water per cycle. So we've brought in those really key technologies so that when people are using this property, they can really see a difference in the, the energy and water usage. There are several benefits to a smart home, but ultimately the main focus for consumers is whether it makes their life easier. A survey run by insurance providers Hippo asked consumers what the main benefits of smart home technology were. Convenience topped the list, with 46% stating it was the main driver. So when we think about smart homes, it has to be something that actually delivers value. So when we think about the domestic energy system and we've got uh, an electric vehicle, an air source heat pump, a battery, uh, a solar panel, it's about driving value and getting the benefit out of all those different variables that are virtually impossible for a consumer to really kind of get a handle on. That's where smart works. You can just kind of input your daily living routine into these systems and it'll do it for you. So it's taking that burden off the homeowner to be energy efficient in the way they're using the different technologies. A lot of it's quite intuitive. So you can just walk in, say, turn on lights or setting routines up so you can have music come on or radio play and turn on your lights in the morning. Especially in the winter months where it's so cold outside, knowing that heat was so well retained, it's just so homogenous throughout the house. Also the smart technology within the home means you won't be unnecessarily using electronics within certain rooms such as lighting, zonal heating is a big thing so you don't need to heat the dining room if you're not going in there. Ultimately that will reduce your energy bills but also your carbon offset of the house. When discussing smart tech there can sometimes be a concern surrounding how data is being used. When looking at the Z House, however, its primary goal was to give people a better understanding of their energy usage in order to both lower their carbon footprint as well as living costs. The Eco Experts, an online advisory for all things carbon and energy saving, reported that currently at least 71% of people in the UK own at least two smart products and that number is likely to rise. The data captured by those devices is key in understanding individual homeowners and then helping them. I mean, data is great because it's not there to really be the big brother. It's actually there to help you spend less, know where you're spending, how to use less. Actually, that data is highly secure because it's so critical. I think we'll see a lot more technology and I think digital services, I think digital energy services, consumer insights, things that people can draw from the data that their house is giving them are going to be more and more popular but I do think there's still you know a competition of ideas. Fundamentally for the consumer if it's not delivering value it will not survive into the long term and will not find its way into lots and lots of homes. Is that house the home of the future? I'd say so, I think it's definitely the way housing needs to go. There's that much stuff that it can do and just make your life that bit easier. It's all these kind of low carbon solutions that I think is the way housing needs to go. What's great about the Z House and a big learning for us was between the renewable technology and the batteries and the IT, those customers were able to live in a comfortable home but actually be saving energy and saving their bills. But that is where we need to get to, where customers get great homes, benefits in their energy bills, but actually the home works and is well engineered. Smart technology encourages a culture of innovation. Hey Google, play some music. With each new generation better than the last, helping us to live even more sustainable lives. It will provide more data and insight about how we use our energy, and it will make sure that our homes use energy wisely, keeping carbon and cost as low as possible. In the next episode, we look at how the home of tomorrow will address the national biodiversity crisis, as well as how it's relieving the pressure on the country's finite supply of fresh water. We're going to see further declines of our unique biodiversity. We can't continue to extract water the rate we are doing and expect nature not to bite back. The situation is so dire, there's no ways about it, it's critical now.